It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Uh, I want to welcome to the program. Uh, back back on the program, we have Mr. David Colbert is with us. He is a mental health activist. David, thanks for coming back on, sir. Thank you, Paul. We've now set the world record for having a anti lottery person on an actual media show. You know, Paul, this is like three times over a decade that anyone in the media has decided that we really should address the impact of the lottery on mental health and on addictions, not just gambling addiction. But you and I know the story about gambling addiction. We're the, the only state in America currently investing zero dollars and zero cents in decreasing the known impacts of gambling. Mm -hmm. And we've added more gambling. And uh, this administration in particular seems to be off the charts friendly to the industry. Uh, to a point, if we look at the uh, situation with the lottery in particular, there's actually a loss associated with our lottery. Uh, the, the, and, you know, and you, now, when you're yeah, talking well, about, hang on, you mean the scholarship lottery for children, David? I mean, I mean for every lottery in America. <laughs> <laughs> when we look at we look at 44 states <clears throat> who consciously, by the way, consciously utilize a revenue production vehicle that has a tremendous negative economic impact, combined with an economic uh, the economic impact of addiction, which. Uh, comes hand in hand with the product sold sold in a monopoly environment harms the uh, local economies no doubt but it harms the overall economy of America because it is a non-tax monopoly based age restricted product dependent uh, at this point the addiction in this state in Arkansas the addiction we see Keep gambling alone. No other drugs involved. Gambling alone. All products. Lottery. Online. Sports betting. Casinos. Is the fastest growing addiction measured in our country among kids 12 to 17 and among seniors 65 years and older. Combining that with the fact that our state, Arkansas, my state, your state, is 47th out of 50 measured states in having any access at all to mental health services. This would include counseling. This includes getting someone who perhaps is suicidal and needs critical care into a facility to have a bed. We... Uh, I agree with you, Paul. But there's nothing about this for children. Uh, if, in fact, it were for children, they would have instituted programs initially and had the opportunity to educate the public about the problems, the health problems that exist with gambling, mm. to educate the public about making a choice. We love to hear people who like to use the famous line, well, David, that's a personal choice. Uh... Nothing is a personal choice when you strategically and persistently advertise to the public with a 100% message of win, 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 win. You've never heard an ad since this lottery started, ever. You've never had one on your radio station, Paul, I know this. You've never, actually, no one in Arkansas has ever run a 30-second commercial that address problem gambling. That alone, that alone is actionable cause in my mind. You mean book. like a, you mean like said, a, well, yeah, a, never, a, never even an ad. Yeah, like, like a, a PSA. Like a PSA. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, mm -hmm. look, but uh, it'd be nice to have a PSA. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'd that's be nice. They, they, what they, what, well, having a background in the TV industry, you and I know this, public service, unless there's some groups uh, that are involved that have sw a little bit of you know sway in the market. 
those are going to run overnight. They're not. You're not really going to. By by no means can you impact or offset the promotional side of gambling by running a, a three o'clock ad. You know, at 50, yeah. a, a thirty second ad. At yeah, three. exactly. Yeah, the, the, so, the so, money. You know, I'll, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll quit. I'll quit, Paul. You know me. I get going. No, no. I appreciate but, it. And, and I but think to close the hotline. To close that hotline. The problem gambling helpline was closed, and I am talking about totally closed, not funded at all, for counseling or for treatment or for any type of education, prevention. This is five years, hmm. literally five years. When, when Well, you know, what, so what, what I think... The power, the power is doing something so... Yeah, well, let me say this. What I, what I think about this, we're talking, by the way, with David Colbert. He's a mental health activist. I've ran into you several times since we've been <clears throat> covering... Uh, the session in general down there, and I always know this is your this is your big issue. But you know, I think a lot of people would would say, "Okay, this is a government sanctioned vice," and you bring up a good point that it's also a monopoly, and that's a whole nother can of worms. Um, because you know, if you if you wanted to make it legal for people to you know do what the mob used to do, which was run numbers, which was found to be illegal, and now it's like, well, if the government says it's okay, we can regulate it, but it's also a monopoly. And it's it's creating these addictions. Um, you know, a lot of people would say, well, to have a helpline at all, or to fund and see, I, from from a lim- from a limited government standpoint, I'm like, you see what the government's done here? They sanctioned something, and then oh, now there's calls to fund something else to clean up the mess that they created in the they first created, place. Created right. Well, it was done in the beginning. This is the power of a state lotteries. Period. This uh, legislative action was passed. On two occasions, in 2010, 2011, and it's actually been available to the state since it started. Um, my involvement goes back to the very, very, very beginnings of it. I had the opportunity to write portions of Act 606, which was the enabling legislation. Johnny Key made it a point to say, you know, uh, David's, got, and I've known Johnny for a long time, so I call him Johnny. <laughs> he said, Colbert's right. There's nothing in here about covering anything to do with prevention or education or there wasn't anything in the original language that dealt with problem gambling period zero not even a mention of it it is common across america for lotteries to dedicate one percent perhaps one percent of their gross annually um toward those education prevention everything the tobacco industry is forced to do the lottery gambling industry should do Everything that, the, and the, granted, it's a government thing again, <laughs> but Arkansas, unlike any state that I've been associated with or ever had the opportunity to work with, consciously understands these things are happening and yet has denied services. And I don't play that, you know, like a, oh, like I'm trying to make the government out to be. I will make it out to be this way. They realize <laughs> that this is an addiction. They realize it's, this product is medically defined. And I'll, I'll agree and disagree, Paul, on this basis. Uh, uh, addiction is addiction is addiction. Uh, and, and, and when we look at it overall as far as the impact goes, that that person who has an addiction in, in the gambling arena uh, brings as much, if not more, harm to themselves and others than an alcoholic, than a drug addict. There is no substance, surely, involved, so it's difficult to see. But earlier what I was saying is Arkansas, unlike any state I'm familiar with, is so aggressively marketing this product that they put a minor child in a TV ad. Now I'm you not aware now, of that hang on. Now, you, I'm not now aware you of that told me about done. this. I remember when this happened. Now, and this yeah. was this was blatantly against the. Uh, <laughs> The, the 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 regulations that are set on this right they're not supposed to use children to actually advertise right well, you, you, this or, is a, a let, me, let me address some legislation that, that has been introduced and will be introduced again first and foremost the state the arkansas state lottery and every american lottery needs to be held accountable by the same standards and practices that a private advertiser or someone in the free market has to Budweiser would be shut down, not shut down. Budweiser would have been fined millions and millions and millions of dollars. And most likely, 
had their advertising stopped and all. Uh, imagine a tobacco company putting an ad on that showed children picking cigarettes and handing them out to, pick, to adults. Is it? Is it? But uh, this ad in question, though, was it? Was it to try to highlight the scholarship lottery aspect of it? Absolutely not. It had two young girls in it and a natural state jackpot of. of a gentleman in there with uh, writing numbers down, and the kids were dancing on a hopscotch on concrete, <laughs> picking the numbers for a numbers game. Exactly what they were doing. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that does seem uh, that does seem a little uh, in bad taste, and that's an understatement. Well, go to a re Paul. Go to a retailer. You'll see uh, Willy Wonka next to candy. You will see a scratch ticket advertised in a point of purchase display. That will be put next to products that are tremendously child-focused products, and they'll sit back and say, "Well, you know, blah blah blah." The point again is, no one is overseeing this. Um, for whatever reason, <laughs> the conviction I had when this passed was the knowledge of what would occur. Can we reduce the things that you and I? There are things in in life that you and I know we can prevent, and we can teach people to. Easy enough. Not, you know, the stove zone, don't touch it. Mm. Do it again, do it again. What we got with Arkansas in particular and children in the lottery is they hired a company that is tremendously aggressive out of Europe, out of the United Kingdom. Uh, people should be aware of that. They were not aware of that. Uh, it was what we've seen way too much in this state, Paul. It was an overnight no doubt agreed upon inside the circle of whoever made the decision to hire a Camelot, a firm called Camelot, uh, based in the United Kingdom, who has never run a North American lottery, ever. So we pay them, from what I understand, upwards to a billion, with a B. <laughs> uh, the people of this state have to wake up across the board about what our government is doing at the state level about no bid contracts. They are a problem not only with the monopoly gambling operation, they are a problem across the board that I've seen professionally for nearly three decades. <laughs> and the end result is not only bad state government, it's corrupt practices mm -hmm. that become a part of this vehicle called the lottery also you know go back to the end of the beginning johnny key said we never should have sold a single ticket without having programs in place just like we do to teach children mm -hmm. about alcohol consumption or about tobacco consumption and again it is a government product yeah thank yeah. you to the government again for looking at it and saying we make more money off of addiction Mm -hmm. Then we do off of well and conservative. Pra well, they don't have a conservative practices period. And it's they also it's liberal. also worth to note. Uh, you know, when you were mentioning earlier, it's such a fast growing addiction, and you compared it with alcohol and and drug use. The interesting thing is, a lot of times, you know, the alcohol and the drug use goes really well with gambling. You know, it's a uh, <laughs> it exists right. It's a co. It's a co. I call it coexisting. Yeah. Some of yeah. it call it co occurring. Mm -hmm. And take it for take it again from David, you know, recovering guy, alcoholic, used alcohol because I'm manic depressive. Mm -hmm. And when you're manic in particular, and Paul's known me long enough to know I'm just a really high energy, passionate guy, but mania is dangerous. Yeah. I mean, not only that, but it's dangerous in a, We're talking the way you... We're talking with David Colbert. He's a mental health activist. We're talking about the scholarship lottery and lotteries in general. Um, we're talking about gambling, Paul. Because yeah, we're, but, at, we're adding casinos. Yeah, that's we're what adding, that's where I wanted to get to. I wanted to get to. I wanted to get to uh, the casino situation. So now Arkansas has written in its constitution. Talk about monopoly. We now have in our constitution uh, written in monopolies for casinos. Uh, you know, two new ones in, in Pope and Jefferson, and the expansion of Oaklawn and uh, Southland. So, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, have you seen a lot of? Uh, is there a lot more money coming in now? Is there a lot more lobbying that's being done I because think, uh, of this? We, we, the, the, the industry on a national and, and, and statewide basis has now become the last data I saw. The gambling industry is, in fact, the number one lobbyist 
They spend more money at the state and federal level just to do things like you've seen here in Arkansas, which is manipulate the legislative process to protect themselves in two ways. Number one, monopolies against competition, but the worst one, the one that's going to harm us here, I hate to say this because I'm, I'm a guy who wants to deal with public health, the tax rates on, on these casinos um, is off. I've never seen anything as absurdly approached. They want to add slots, and I'm talking about massive amounts of slot machines, probably, likely, anywhere from fifty to 75000 between four facilities. And you'll probably go, that's crazy. That's true, though. You've been to most larger casinos. They do have slot machines. They're, that's their big, big, big producer. Yeah. But here, to tax those machines at a rate that is literally 11 to 12 points below the national standards, that's money. We are The state says, quote, unquote, we're going to produce this revenue that's going to help. The reality is gambling as an industry doesn't have to have red in their ledger. And that is correct. I mean, if, when you think about them as an industry, they have a red profit side. They, literally speaking, even the lottery, doesn't show the loss against whatever their profit is. So you, you, it's hard to comprehend as a private sector person how the industry can really operate without massively, in some ways, bringing public health harms because much of their profits come from people, as you said, who already have alcohol problems, who already have some drug-related problems. Uh, Pine Bluff is going to be a... A huge problem. I worked in opposition to Pine Bluff. I worked somewhat with Russellville, uh, who I think Pope County likely will not see a casino, but it will be in the area. Pine Bluff is an example of what occurs when a, when a town in particular, as we've seen across America, when, when cities and metropolitan areas fall to bad Times, literally speaking, economically, employment-wise, Pine Bluffs very, you know, very much well defined as such. Many, many, many of them have turned to gambling, and in our case, uh, I'm certain that Oakland and Southland and the casinos that came in and the lottery had a strategy. Uh, you know, never allow anyone to tell you the gambling industry is not buddies. They may compete, but here, literally, as you said, because they're monopolistic. They wrote their own tax rates. That that was a part of this. I, I have to firmly believe that the existing casinos did not fight this measure, as, again, Paul, the legislative guys didn't. If you recall uh, driving Arkansas forward, do you recall that, I, the measure? Yeah, I do. And they, uh, Yeah, I, I t 100% remember Do you recall the, the double truck statewide ad against it by, by 100, I don't know how many, the, the they organized in opposition to that. Uh, the legislative body was heavily opposed to it. They took out advertising. They traveled. Uh, there was a group. Oakline, of course, was the major funder for this. But exactly the opposite occurred this time, not a peep. Mm -hmm. Not even the liberals that were, and then there were a number of liberals involved. The ones who were involved in opposing casinos in the past even peeped their heads above he said, and even those who I know are staunchly, staunchly conservative who've been with me from the beginning didn't poke their heads up out of the hole. Mm. I have to again believe that the highway plan had was somewhat a part of this. They they looked at it and said, here's some revenue, and we really, you know, my road plan is my, I suppose, legacy. I'm not sure what the governor's legacy is going to be, to be honest with you. I have no idea. Uh, but, but when you look at that dedicated $35 million, a very similar approach in the past uh, by myself and a few others was to go to the lottery and casinos and dedicate a stream of revenue directly to mental health services and addictions with the plural services because of what you and I have confirmed today, which is, you know, gambling is a non-substance substance, which in fact, many if not all the time, has a problem that exists before the person begins to gamble. You know, that yeah. women yeah. who are depressed, probably one of the, 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 the most problematic forms of gambling for them are slot machines. Hmm. And slots are designed from the get-go, psychologically, visually, 
uh, to appeal to forces of the brain in some regard, which is a behavioral addiction. Yeah. Uh, and you said earlier when you were saying, well, that addicts people. That's true. There's two different scenarios here. We've got a product like, let's comparatively speaking, to alcohol. Here. Uh, all of a sudden, in Arkansas, let's, we've only got two liquor stores. Okay, we've got one and you know a couple of them. That's all we got, right? But we're not. Folks say, well, we want Arkansas. We want the government to run this. We want the government to take over the liquor business. Okay, that's fine. We wake up and there's two thousand liquor stores. There's only two for years and you know forever. Now there's two thousand. So the first thing the government does to make more money is they go out and they say, look, we know we help people who are alcoholic, but we can't do that anymore. We've got to exploit the opportunity we have to maximize our revenue through addiction. If we're really lucky, we can shut down AA. You know, we can stop those meetings, too. But what we really have to do is look at any public education. We can't tell children, in particular, that alcohol has any harms at all. And this is exactly wow. what wow. they have done with lottery gambling wow. and Guess who's included now? The casinos, because they've said to my face, David, we're never going to do this, meaning they're never going to uh, voluntarily invest any money in these type of programs, quote unquote, unless the state makes us yeah. do it. David, my we've friend, got, we've, they'll never, we, yeah, we, go ahead. We've got to go real quick. I want to ask so you say there is legislation out there this session to try to address some of this stuff. Is that true? Yes, sir. I'm. I'm been blessed to be able to write it all <laughs> so i've got awesome. I, I will I, I will email you uh, yeah email you me remember senator clark, well senator clark worked with worked in 2015 with myself and some others on senate bill 488 it got passed finally but then it was killed in committee and what you'll see on gambling issues is rules in particular kills a ton of good bills that are policy related in gambling yeah david we, uh, we've, we've got, got to go we've well, got let's, to take, let's we've have... got to take the guys off this oversight committee yeah. that have and they do have an interest and most if not all of them voted to take away all these services so it wealth really is not a fair well it's not david, a fair environment david you are a wealth of knowledge let's have you back on let's talk again soon okay sir and we'll get that Thank bill number out. Have okay. a great day. I appreciate you all. Yes, sir. God bless. Folks, uh, we'll have a write-up on this at condomnews.com. We'll give you the bill number and uh, a copy of this interview back in a minute.